Okay, in this video we're going to learn how to quick sketch a quadratic function. And by quick sketching, I mean that you're going to identify certain points of the parabola that's being created by the quadratic. Okay, and what are those points? You're going to identify the vertex, you're going to identify the y-intercept, you're going to identify the x-intercepts, possibly plural, and we'll figure out why in a second. Okay, so the vertex, the y-intercept, the x-intercept, and then which direction your parabola will open, upwards or downward. Okay, so let's get started. So if these are our four little categories that we need to find, let's just go ahead and, and organize this in a very efficient manner. Okay, so we'll, we'll call our first thing to do over here is our vertex. All right, so what do we do? <clears throat> Remember, because math is really just a language, and you're really just writing to me like some kind of a, an essay about what you're solving. Okay, and this is like our outline. So in order to find the vertex, I need to know the vertex formula. Okay, and the formula for a vertex is uh, negative b over 2a, which will find the x value, and then 4ac minus b squared over 4a. Now, this is actually begging a question, and the question, and when you say when you beg a question, it means you're trying to find out what these things are. What's the a, the b? and the C actually mean, all right? Remember the A is the quadratic coefficient. It's the number that's in front of the quadratic term. And in this case, the number in front of the X squared or the quadratic term is just one, okay? So let's make sure we know that. My B is the number or the coefficient that's in front of the linear term. And remember, I'm using these words very specific. Quadratic term, quadratic coefficient. Linear term, linear coefficient. And in this case, it's a negative 4, isn't it? So that's my b. And then finally, the c is just the constant. Okay? And the constant is, again, that number at the very, very end in the standard form. Okay. Now, one thing I wanted to mention real quickly, too. Make sure that your quadratic uh, function is in standard form, and if you don't have all these terms, you have to have the quadratic term, but if you don't have these two, just put in what they call a dummy variable. A dummy variable just means that you put in a zero in front of the uh, variable, so you'd say something like, let me just put this down here real quickly, uh, you know, like zero x plus zero, so let's just do something like this. Okay, so x squared, there's my quadratic term, so I know I have a quadratic function, but let's say I don't have any of these other ones, just put in 0x plus 0. Therefore, your, your a would be 1, but your b would be 0, and your c would be 0. Okay, that's just a quick aside. Now let's go, let's go back up here and let's continue on. Okay, vertex. So, negative b. <clears throat> that's step 1, identify it. Step 2. A negative, negative 4, so I can put it in parentheses, over 2 times, again, parentheses, 1. And then over here, I'm going to put in 4 times A, which again is 1, C, which is 10, minus B squared, so negative 4, quantity squared, all over 4 times a, which is 1. Again, please put these in parentheses. It's going to help you take care of your pluses and minuses. Step 3, let's simplify what we got. A negative, negative 4 is a positive 4 over 2, which turns out to be just 2. Okay? 4 times 10 is 40. 4 squared is... Um, Four, negative 4 squared, rather, is 16, so it's 40 minus 16 over 4. 40 minus 16 is, what, 20, 24 over 4? And 24 over 4 is just 6. 
So now, in terms of a quick sketch, I know that my vertex, let's just put in our last statement here. Here's like the beginning and here's the end. The vertex is, is at the point two, six. Okay, so quick sketch. One, two, X. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's right there. Okay. Now, <clears throat> which direction is my parabola opening? Oh, I want to find the y-intercept too, actually, right? So let me just find the y-intercept. I know it's at 10. Now, this is interesting. So I know that it's going to be at the C, right? So the y-intercept, second paragraph, if you want to look at it that way, y-intercept is C. C is equal to 10. So my intercept is at 0 and 10. Let's go back over to here. Let's continue on with this. That's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So now I've got, here's my vertex, 2, 6, y-intercept, 0, 10. I know that my direction I'm going to skip x-intercept just here because uh, I want you to see something. I know that my direction is a positive, right? Because my a is positive 1, so it's going to be opening upward. Look what this does. That means my parabola is going to look something like that. What does that tell me about my x-intercepts? That there aren't any. Now, this is what's interesting. Do not, actually, let me just say this differently. Do not cross the, I'm going to put this in parentheses, x-intercepts, do not cross the x-axis. It doesn't mean that it's not a real parabola. It is a real parabola. It's just that the x-intercepts or the parabola, rather, does not cross the x-axis. This is an introduction. I will still get an x value, but those values will be imaginary numbers. Okay? They won't be real numbers. Remember, the x-axis x -axis are real numbers, right? It's the real number line. I can still get a value for this, but they're going to be what's called imaginary numbers, and that's something we'll learn in a different video. Okay, hope that was helpful.